Hi, my name is Gabrielle. I'm an application specialist here at Mamaki. There are many digital printing solutions for textiles. In the fashion and home decor market, direct-to-fabric printing with pigment ink is growing in popularity due to the minimal amount of post-production. In today's Tips and Tricks video, I'll give you an overview of how pigment inks are used for custom fabric printing for upholstery. So without further ado, let's get started. The first thing is creating a pattern for your furniture piece. So let's start by using a design software. Today I'll be using Photoshop. So here you see I have a pre-existing design repeat. And as you can see, I have a black and white design. So let's add some color and elements to it. Once I've completed my design to obtain a motif of my liking, I can save my image. Please note this design can be repeated in Rasterlink, therefore there is no need to repeat it in Photoshop. So in Rasterlink, I'm going to go to File Open, select my file. Once the file appears in a job list, the next step is clicking the quality icon to choose the media profile, resolution, and color matching settings. Please note that these settings will vary depending on your production and textile media. The next step is repeating your motif. A motif is a repeated image or element often used in textile design. You can easily repeat your motif by using the step and repeat tool. Under type, you can specify the way of laying images or your motif. In textile, repeats are often offset or staggered, but in this case, this pattern repeats normally. Under size, I can specify the repeat size for my motif or image using the length or number of pieces tool. Either option is great to use, so after repeating my pattern as needed, now it's time to print. For this application, I'll be using the TX300P Mark II. This is our all-in-one direct-to-textile printer for all textile applications. Here I am printing on a heavyweight coated cotton linen fabric with pigment inks. Pigment ink is one of the most used ink sets for home furnishing. Pigment inks has great color fastness and is resistant to UV light, making it ideal for interior decor. And if you're printing on a pre-treated fabric, this increases the ink density, color reproduction, and durability. Heat setting pigment ink requires minimal post-process which means the inks do not need steaming and washing post print, but just a calendar press. The ink set requires the same post process as dye sublimation ink. So here I'm just heat setting our fabric for 320 degrees Fahrenheit for one to three minutes. Please note these settings will vary depending on the parameters of the media, calendar settings, and production. After fixating the ink, let's head over to Sherry's Fabric in Swanee to have Kent and George reupholster an ottoman with our new design. Sherry Fabric is a great local fabric and upholstery shop here in Georgia. So if you ever need to shop for fabrics or need something reupholster or just need to be around great people, visit Sherry's Fabric. All right, so now that we have our ottoman here, um, at Sherry's Fabric, step one in refreshing old furniture is removing old fabric. So say goodbye, get riddance. Um, so Kent here is disassembling the ottoman as needed and removing the upholstery pieces. So the first thing he does is he begins removing the feet of the ottoman. And then after that is completed, he removes the black cloth from the underside of the ottoman and then loosen the pieces attached to the frame. So next, George is gonna sew on the welting. And Wilton is also called piping and cording. So Wilton is one or two cords that are covered in fabric. So how you can make Wilton is by cutting two inch wide bias strips and you fold the bias strip around the cord and use a zipper foot to sew in place. 
And so what you're going to do is sew along the cording as tight as possible the full length of the fabric. And so the welting will go around the bottom and the top of the ottoman. After sewing the welting to the top fabric, um, he would then sew all four side panels together and then attach these panels to the top fabric. So after the pattern pieces are sewn, you can then replace the batting. If the batting is worn or stained, um, you can remove it. However, in this case, the batting is in good condition. So what we want to do is just add additional batting um, to our furniture piece and then staple it in place. Next, take the sewn pattern pieces and pull it over the ottoman. You want to make sure the fabric is pulled tight towards the bottom of the ottoman and staple it in place. Next, take your second Wilton piece and staple it on all four sides. The Wilton will go around the bottom of the ottoman. Next, you will cut a piece of black breathable fabric for the underside of the ottoman. And this will help to sew any springs or webbing and act as a dust cover. But you're going to make sure this fabric is tight against the welting and that it covers up all raw edges of the upholstery fabric. Once this is completed, turn your ottoman right side up and enjoy your newly reupholstered ottoman, which is perfect for any interior space. <laughs>